Hi everyone, Lina here and today we will cover a brief period in Russian history that only lasted for one year. However, it was the beginning of the longest ever rule in Russian history. Today we talk about Catherine the Great's husband, Peter III. As we mentioned in our previous video, Elizabeth didn't have any kids. So who took the throne after her death? That future to be Peter III was born in Olstein, which is today's northern in Germany, and back then it was called Prussia. Why there? We have to go back to Peter the Great's time in the early 1700s when he started to arrange marriages between Russian Serenas and European royals. And one of his daughters, the sister of Empress Elizabeth, married into the family of Karl Friedrich, the ruler of the Duchy of Olstein. So Peter III was Empress Elizabeth's nephew and Peter the Great's grandson. Right after Peter III was born, his mother, 20-year-old Anna, died after catching a cold at her son's birthday celebration. His father didn't spend much time with Peter because he was busy fighting Denmark and trying to get part of the land Duchy of Austin lost in previous wars. The kid was growing around handlers with no parental guidance to give him a good start. When Peter was only 11 years old, his father died and left him the whole duchy of Austin to govern. When Elizabeth took power back in 1741, she ordered her nephew to come to Russia at once. It was important for her because it would allow her to pass the throne down her dynasty line. Here in St. Petersburg, in 1742, he converted into Russian Orthodoxy and was declared an heir to the Russian throne. In the beginning, Elizabeth loved him wholeheartedly. But he would do things that disappointed her over and over again, and little by little she stopped caring about him and stopped having him around her. The main reason for that was the fact that Peter the Great's grandson could not care less about Russia and his Russian heritage. He would whine about missing his homeland all the time and would often disobey his aunt. Ever since his childhood days, Peter was very phlegmatic, low energy, yet stubborn and not at all smart, totally unfit to rule Russia. With all this said, he wasn't a cruel or ruthless person. It was that he felt alien to the Russian court. He didn't like emperors spying on him, and it all was making things worse. He would always stay at his estate in a place called Oranienbaum, just miles off Peterhof near St. Petersburg. It was only there where he could relax, be himself, and live in peace. In a beautiful park there, famous architect Rinaldi had built him a private palace. There was also a gigantic sledding slope in that park, as well as the exquisite Chinese palace. Peter's favorite part there was a Petershans fortress, where he had his own private regiment of the finest Austin officers brought all the way from Germany just for him. This was the place where he felt totally safe and at home. His biggest hero was a Prussian king, Friedrich II. And even during the Seven Years' War, when he was already living in Russia, Peter still favored his beloved Prussia. And the first thing he did when he took over the throne was negotiating peace with Friedrich, saving him from being destroyed by the Allied forces. But there was more. Peter had suggested that Russia and Prussia form their own alliance, and he had started to prepare the Russian army to go take over Denmark, which had just seized a big part of Prussia. It all was not popular with the people. An alien emperor using Russia to help his own country was something that people could not understand, and the coup against such ruler was just a matter of time. Still, we can't say that all his rule was a rule of failures. He signed an edict which gave nobles a certain amount of freedom. State service was no longer mandatory. They could now go abroad and even sign working contracts there. It's possible that this edict was made during Elizabeth's reign and that Peter had only signed it. But this was a beginning of something new for Russia and it happened during his rule. He was also working on other edicts, but they were never realized because his own wife had him dethroned and killed. 
from the first days of their marriage, things were not going well for Peter. She, Catherine, did love him, and she dreamed of taking the throne away from him. Unlike her husband, she was smart, intelligent, and quick on her feet. She would make the necessary connections as her husband struggled to rule the country he hated. Catherine knew how to sell, and she sold her ideas right when she showed her support to her newly adopted country. Someone Grigory Arlov and his brothers took care of things when the moment was right. Peter was cheating on his wife with one of the ladies-in-waiting and was planning to send his wife to a convent. In 1762, the situation escalated and on June 28, Catherine, with her supporters, took to action. Arlovs started the unrest with their guardsmen in St. Petersburg and she, who was staying in Peterhof, took off for the city. When she got there, all the military was out in the streets showing their support. When Peter heard of the news, he sent Catherine numerous letters asking for pardon and for him and his mistress to be sent back to his homeland in Olstein, Prussia. When Catherine's officers arrived at Peterhof, he didn't resist and surrendered to their mercy and immediately abdicated from the throne. Then he was transferred to another suburb where he had mysteriously died. It's unclear if it was Catherine who ordered for him to be killed, but it's absolutely clear that she considered it might happen. For her, the most important thing was to take power, and whatever happened along the way was of secondary importance for her. Today, the most of the historians believe that Peter was murdered, and one of his guardsmen later confessed in letters and said that they did actually kill him. But there was no investigation. Peter was 34 when he died, and the longest ever rule in Russia has begun. Catherine came to stay, and she ruled for 34 long years and became one of the most known and one of the most controversial Russian rulers. Next video is going to be all about her. Thank you for watching this video and please put as many likes as you can, comment down below and see you next time!